So I'm Sean. Uh, in a moment, we'll be hearing more from Sir Mark Grundy, who you can see alongside me. Mark's the CEO of Shireland Collegiate Academy in the Midlands. And I'm sure some of you might know Mark, but many will know the reputation of Shireland for the exceptional work they do in supporting our young people, their innovation in the curriculum and EdTech practice. And Edgy School is the vehicle through which this practice in today's session is going to highlight how you can go about um, the, be the very best in, in remote or hybrid learning. Morning, Sean. Morning, everybody. Um, uh, welcome to Under the Bizarre Monday. Um, I suspect your, your Mondays are just as interestingly different as mine are now. Um, um, thanks for the very generous introduction, Sean. Um, so my group of schools are all based in the West Midlands, a group of primary and secondary schools. I think um, we've because we support um, a number of communities that are socially and economically disadvantaged, we've always used technology to try and level the playing field. So for years and years, the only way I could actually get into homes and support uh, our pupils, both primary and secondary, was to use some form of technology. And we've used everything. We, you know, we obviously use tablets, but we, we use phones. We we now get our youngsters to access via PS4s and Xboxes and all sorts of things because the most important thing for us was actually to get to youngsters. In the summer, as we were well, in the spring, as we went into lockdown, we worked with Sean uh, and a couple of other partners, including Nesta, who funded it, to create something called Edge of School. And it started as something that actually was to try and support the year 10 students um, that uh, had been given devices by, by the department, by DfE. But what we took into this was everything that we've done over the last um, probably 15 to 20 years on actually developing an online curriculum. And one of the things that we've had for a period of time is both a primary and a secondary online curriculum. And what I'm going to do this morning is I'm just going to show you what we've done together, uh, what Glue and Sharp My Trust and Hodder have all done together to actually create uh, an even bigger version of, of Edu School. So I'm going to take you to um, a theme. So. So, Sean, just tell me that you can see this and then I know I can carry on. Yeah, that's fine, Mark. It's all there. Okay. It's, 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 so, Edgy School is, is our solution to support um, what schools will need and youngsters will need, um, both in terms of their remote learning now, um, a hybrid into the future, because um, we've done this at Shireland and across the Shireland group of schools for lots and lots of years for all the reasons I just said about it lets me get into homes it levels the playing field it doesn't matter that those families may not have the sort of books that got off and will take for granted with our own children um, so this could be used remotely this could be used in a hybrid way but also this could be used for core delivery um, and what I'm showing you here are some of the themes that are within the primary curriculum that are used across our group of schools. So, as I said, we have a group of primary schools, group of secondary schools, all on the south, um, on the in the black country, on the edge of Birmingham, um, in the in the West Midlands. Um, so, this is the first of the themes that I want to show you. Um, this is called worth repeating. This is a this is a year two theme. Um, and what you've got here is a completely delivered theme, with the idea being that. Um, we would create all the resources for you to be able to use, your staff to be able to use, and the children, obviously, um, for a period of time, probably 30 or 40 hours worth of work. Uh, and they, our themes all look, um, they all have a similar format. So they all start with a driving question. Um, and then they obviously go into a theme introduction. There's a map of the curriculum coverage, and then there will be a, the a, a basically a, a small video that actually explains potentially how you could use this theme. Uh, but it doesn't tell you what you've got to do. It just gives you a view of, look, you could use it in this particular way. I think one of the things we've tried to do for years and years, because um, not only do we support our group of schools, we have a whole group of other schools in, the, in our region where um, we support them with their curriculum, we support them with their technology. What we, we realised years and years ago is um, just create 80% of a structure and then make sure there's enough space for actually different schools and, in, uh, and just different individuals to actually customise it for their children. And the same essence flows all the way through Edge of School. So theme introduction, introductory video, um, curriculum coverage, and then all the way through the primary themes. I'm going to show you two of those in the next sort of 15, 20 minutes. Then I'm going to take loads of questions because I'd much rather answer your questions. Um, they all have this, this, this consistent part here. They have people, place and time, a knowledge bank, 
uh, links to cultural awareness in terms of cultural capital, which is something that we've pushed for years and years and years, well ahead of, of, of sort of Ofsted jumping on the bandwagon and a gallery of resources. But if I go to people, place and time, what you have here, um, and I suppose it's, it's, it's in the label, are the key people that we think relate to this theme. And if I click on, Gregor, um, let's just move this out of the way. So I quick, click on Gregor. What you'll see is um, we've then created, let's just make this a little bit larger. Um, we've then actually created key activity sheets for all, well, not for all, but for a number of key people that we think supports this worth repeating thing. Mendel, um, where, and also what you can do from this is you can you can actually click, you can use this um, link, you can actually go and find more, more, uh, more resources. Um, if I go through, you've just got a whole series of key people here who will actually support this theme. Um, again, with the idea being that you could use it in class, um, you could use it at home, um, Go back again. We've also created a map here of all the key, res again, of the key elements that we think supports this theme so that actually um, our learners can work out where things are in the world. And equally, we've also created a timeline so that again, they get a view of the chronology relating to this particular theme. So all of our themes in primary all have these three component parts. They have the key people so that actually youngsters know who were the key figures in terms of the development of the body of knowledge around this theme. Where in the world do th did things take place? So again, they get that, that, that idea of geography and then um, a timeline. So yet again, again they, they have an understanding of the chronology of the key events that, that actually are part of this particular theme. And all of them have the same in terms of that. All of the themes have a knowledge bank and in the knowledge bank, Two, two key components. Um, there's work on key vocabulary, and there's actually the key essential knowledge elements that we feel should be covered in this um, subunit of, of the curriculum. On to cultural awareness. Um, and what we've done is we've gone and located and then put a wrap around. I won't, I won't go to these. Um, what do we think of the key bits of music, the key bits of art, a key poem, a key piece of prose that actually we feel will add that richness and support actually as you support the young sister, make sure they understand um, as deeply as they possibly can what they need to know in this con in this theme of worth repeating. And then finally, a gallery. Um, and the gallery is there. So we've dumped all sorts of images, all sorts of resources so that if you want to, to change something, because um, again, to, without repeating myself, the, the whole idea of our curriculum development over um, over 20 years now has been to do the heavy lifting for staff and for children. So create a theme, create the resources, create the activities, um, make sure that it's, it's well mapped to national curriculum and also to the expectations of inspection, um, that we've got that cultural richness in. But also we want you to change things. So there's a gallery here of resources that you can add into here. As you then go into the theme, there's a curriculum overview. So here there is a, a map of exactly what this covers in a more detailed level. Here there is a map of the, the themes that will be in Edge School, both in primary and in secondary. Um, in here, there's some there, there's um, key supporting material about actually how you work in a blended way. Um, and then there's a, a list of other resources you might want to go to look to. So, all of our primary themes are actually based upon the primary structure that's, that's used in, in our primary schools. And that primary structure is, is called E3L. Um, and it's called E3L because it's got three E's in it. It's got Excite, it's got Explore, and it's got Excel. The Excite is the hook. So what can we put out there? What will really get um, pupils to think, yep, I want to know something about worth repeating. I, I already know that bit. I now want to do more on this. So what there is in there, is an excite and there always will be and it will tell you um, to go to a particular place it will say ask ask your students to look at this it will take you to a particularly either a resource or a web um, space and the idea is that that's that's the bit that really gets their appetite um, whetted and we can move them forward from there oops my mouse had just decided to freeze 
the meat of all of our themes are a series of explores. So the idea of these are that, as it says there, they are um, carefully sequenced. Um, there's key skills in them. They're, they deliver the essential knowledge and concepts from the National Curriculum Programmes of Study. Um, and, and they will be done in an order. So they will be established in a particular order. And this is what the explores look like. And the idea is, as I've, as I've said, and I know I end up saying whenever I present this, um, everything you need to deliver worth repeating is here. And probably a bit more, but there still is a, an, a presumption that actually what you'll do is take people will take this and say, actually, that, that doesn't quite suit our youngsters. It's, it's sort of 90% there. If I just added something I've done for years in terms of um, pattern recognition or growing a seed or whichever of these they are, um, you'll then add that part of your own. But in essence, everything is here to cover all of the activities to do uh, with worth repeating. And if I go into one of them, let's go into let's go to leaf painting. Um, all the same, they'll have the key focus. It'll tell you a little bit about how you do it and all the key resources to do with leaf painting as our explore activity will be in there. And then for every single theme, there's obviously an, there's an Excel. And the, the whole concept of the Excel is that there will be in the theme and something that actually captures as to whether the youngsters have actually achieved this or not. All of our themes are mapped against um, our assessment structure. We've got a primary essential, essential skills structure and they're all mapped against this. In the case of worth repeating, actually what we've used is a knowledge quiz. And there's a multiple choice quiz in here that youngsters can do and then you can pull all the data together and see how well they've done in terms of understanding the key concepts that you've gone through. Um, and that in essence, is it are the key things that will happen in school in terms of worth repeating but one of the things that we've done for years and years in our group of schools is try and get into home whenever we can because whilst we have the youngsters for um, lots of hours um, and families are now realizing just how long we have them for i think um i still want more time so all the way through edgy school we've also built in some explores that actually we don't expect to be done in school we expect we want to be done at home. And we've tried to create a whole pack of these. So th there's one here on fingerprint fun and there's one on stunning art. And if I go to stunning art, again, same idea is um, what we've done is create the whole thing so that it can either be printed at home or if youngsters have got devices at home, they can actually go on here um, they can obviously use the, the code there and they can look for other things. Um, QR codes, we've, we've embedded all the way through the structure of this again. So it, it, it tries to add a bit more of a richness to this. Um, but again, whole idea, idea of this is not done in school. These two activities are done as home, at home. Obviously, one of the things that you could be doing now is using all of these resources at home. So we've already got a number of schools that we've been talking to and we're supporting who are using this as their core curriculum, their core delivery, but others are obviously, have obviously decided to use this in a different way. So, Sean, I'm going to flick to Amazing Islands. So hopefully, tell me if you can see it. Yes, yeah, so this has come up, Mark. Okay, all right. So in the same way, I, I don't intend everybody to go through uh, this in the same degree. Do, but So this is a year five theme. Um, and what we're doing is we're trying to move our way through key stage two, key stage one and key stage two and doing a number of themes so that actually as we go through this, there's a sort of equal number of themes ready for people to use. Um, and we've got about, I think uh, at the moment, there's four themes that are in the sort of pilot structure, but there are another 13 themes under development at the moment. Um, and this one's a different one. This is year five. And as I say, same format, introduction, curriculum coverage, um, an interactive vi video that tells you how to get the most out of Amazing Islands. And then the same, exactly the same thing. Um, people, place and time, the knowledge, the culture, the gallery. And then again, the same sort of thing, excites and explores. And if you go to the explores, um, I think, there's a, I think there's a couple of more explores in Amazing Islands in terms of, uh, of numbers of of activities um, and again everything is here um, and we've we've 
obviously, obviously one of the huge advantages, having worked as a trust of schools where we support the schools that we do in the West Midlands, the ability to actually work with partners like Hodder and also um, What on Earth Books and Glue has allowed us to take work that we've used for years and years to a completely different level because we've got access to all of uh, both Hodder and What on Earth Books resources. So there are some great activities in here. Um, I suppose I think the lockdown we've seen the best and the worst of our school system. I think the, the best has been just how amazingly well staff have done teaching and non-teaching and how well youngsters have done and actually how many families have um, have shown us how much they're prepared to do but it starts to wear thin if you don't have resources and the whole concept of edgy school is that we give people the resources um, we give them the resources in school so it takes that pressure off um, people to prepare and spend ridiculous amounts of time on preparation when actually the vast majority of things that we do in both primary and secondary we're all doing so we may as well actually get someone to do the heavy lifting. And you know, that, my, my, it, I think it, it, my staff wince when they hear that, um, but that, that has always been our mantra. If we can do the heavy lifting for staff, then actually the staff will do the heavy lifting for the youngsters. So um, Amazing Islands, same sort of idea. Um, and actually what I'm going to do now, Sean, is I'm, I'm gonna stop and perhaps take some questions and then come back to this if people want to see specific parts. All right. Sure. Thank you, Mark. That was, uh, that was very helpful. So um, we've had a, a review of one of the resources. So are there any questions that anybody would like to raise? Um, any observations? I think it's connecting to audio by the looks of it. So um, we'll just we'll just hang on for for thirty seconds, boss. So while people are being brave, um, so what we will have over the next two years is the whole of the primary curriculum um, within Edge School. Um, we'll have um, a significant amount of it ready by the time we get to the beginning of the summer term. So there'll, there'll probably be six or seven primary themes uh, all ready by the time we get to the start of the summer. Um, they are obviously mapped into an order, but again, that, you know, as we all know, that's up to you. You can, you can decide how you want to do that. So if you want to change them, you can do that. Um, they'll, all be, they'll all be resourced to the same level that you've just seen with Worth Repeating and, and Amazing Islands. Any questions yet? Or any comments, Sean? Everyone's very quiet. Uh, no, there's no, nothing in chat at the moment, Mark. So um, maybe move back to showing the, the Amazing Islands resource and see if that prompts some thoughts. Okay. So, um, so what are we asked at the moment? So we're asked, how would you suggest we use it? And as, as I said, I think, um, a number of schools will use this as their core delivery. Um, and, it, and in essence, that's what it's designed for. Um, but there's other schools. Uh, we, we're just supporting a couple of schools in our region. Um, and what they desperately want to do is to, is to have an ordered mechanism for catch up for their children. So what we know they, they're going to do is they're going to use Amazing Islands with year five as their structure. And they're going to run Amazing Islands almost like a longitudinal homework project. Um, so they're going to put that out. They're just making a big um, thing about that with their families. So they're just writing out to all the families and saying, look, we're going to do as much as we can in terms of catch up. We're still going to do teams lessons. Um, we're still going to do some key teams events. We're going to do this. There's going to be some paper based resources. But actually what we're going to do is we're going to ask all of year five um, as we prepare for them to go into year six to actually you do Amazing Islands as their key activity. Um, and what we've helped them with a little bit, though, I say not a lot, because actually once you get into this theme to using the, the resource, it's it's easy to use. They're very easy to use. Um, but what the school is doing is picking its way through those explores and deciding on a work plan and then shipping it out to families and saying, you know, between now and part of the way through the summer term, this is this is actually what we want you to do. Um, and these are the key things we want you to upload. And this is our timeline in terms of actually how we're, we're going to work with you. 
Um, and as I say, it's how you use these resources it are very much up to you. Um, there, there's, without doubt, there's more resources than you'll need in the period of time that you probably would allocate to a theme like Amazing Islands or worth repeating. Um, so it's for you to say, well, actually, I'm going to do those things because everything's mapped. You can see where you're changing something. Um, all the themes are carefully sequenced to make sure they move their way through um, the National Curriculum Programmes of Study. And then in terms of those essential skills, um, those build up incrementally as you work through the themes. Um, and, um, and obviously you can choose then whether you use um, the, the core explores as the activities, whether you do the core explores and then you take some of those family learning activities and use them slightly differently. Um, Obviously, our own schools will use the core activities and ask families to work on the family learning activities because we're used to working online. We've done this for a, um, a significant amount of time now. How are we doing in terms of questions or anything, Sean? Nothing? Um, no, we really? still we still have <laughs> nothing in. Um, I think it might be worth talking about some of the PD that we can make available, perhaps, um, given that <clears throat> um, yeah. So, just to sort of give a summary, um, we're, we're very keen generally as part of the delivery here, not just to be putting the resources out into schools, but also to ensure that teachers are, are successful in deploying the edgy school resources. So we'll be running a program of um, PD, which will start in the next couple of weeks. You'll be able to see all of that on the edgy.school website. I've posted a link into chat a few minutes ago, uh, but essentially we'll show you how you can deploy the edgy school resources in Teams, Google Classroom, using Loom, um, just giving some how-to tips and hints through video-based instruction. Mm -hmm. um, so you can sort of catch up a, and learn how best to apply the resources as, as you go. Sorry, I think somebody was just maybe asking a question there, so I'll stop talking for a moment. I'll stop sharing. Okay. I see there's some chat. Okay, yes, yeah, so Kate's asking, is the progression mapping shown per foundation subjects across the year groups? Yeah, it is, it is. So there's a, there's a skills map, Kate, in this, um, and then there's also, um, in terms of national curriculum, there's a progression map, there's, a, there's effectively a sort of, um, uh, almost like an underground map that actually shows you um, across the themes how we're covering the key components of national curriculum but then equally there's the same thing in terms of skill development so yes there is yeah um, and actually the underground map structure works really well um, it's a very um, it's a very visual way of seeing actually how things um, are developing um, so yep yeah, that, that's that's in place hi that's that's great thank you for answering that so schools are well placed for if they have ops offsted deep dives then <laughs> they are yeah yeah okay. i'm always reticent to say this will protect anybody and I, and I do think that the people who purport to have created um, the offsted ready curriculum it's a really risky thing to say but sure. has all this been done to make sure that we get the right coverage of national curriculum and actually things are um carefully sequenced absolutely yeah uh, both in terms of content development and skill development yeah that's brilliant, thanks. So this is the quietest audience, Sean, I think I've ever presented to. He must have done a good job, Mark, in telling people about the resources. <laughs> or, or it's just Monday morning. Um, <laughs> everyone, everyone's got to be shell shock. Um, Sean, we, we've had a question. So from, oh, um, from Rich. So, okay. Rich, um, so the, the, the pilot, Richard, the pilot with Nesta was actually designed really for year 10. Um, and what we did in the summer was uh, we invited uh, the year 10 students who'd received a device from um, about 15 or 16 schools in the West Midlands um, and we hosted them all the way through the summer. Um, and um, I suppose actually there is a bit from this that, that Sean, I'm not sure we've mentioned, which is um, what became really clear during the summer was that we needed to focus as much on curriculum delivery and on achievement as we did on well-being and building resilience. So actually one of the things that I haven't um, spent much time talking about in here is there is another element to this um, that is being added into the edge of school resources, which is a whole bank of activities and structures to try and develop the, that resilience 
um, actually support our youngsters in terms of their well-being. And one of the things that became very clear as we were supporting um, predominantly year 10 students in the edge of school pilot um, was that was really important actually catching youngsters and making them uh, believe they could actually do this um, get allowing them somehow to have an ability to talk to somebody or talk to each other or actually just reflect on how things were going was really important that social isolation that our youngsters in all phases of experience that um, we built into this so actually um, and the uptake that we got from from the, the from the students was, was phenomenal given that this was their summer holidays um, and um, I, I don't know whether primary youngsters are any better than secondary youngsters are wanting to do stuff in the summer. I think from our schools, uh, my experience is probably not, but we had thousands of visits to our structure, uh, to our site. Uh, a huge number of youngsters um, actually took part in activities and uploaded activities through the summer. And it be became very clear actually how isolated some of them have felt in terms of their learning. So the the edge of school pilot then influenced how, actually how we've as a group of, of, of participants in this actually how we've built the new version of edge of school and there are there's mental health and well-being activity in both the primary part of this and the secondary part of this what have we learned <laughs> yes yeah yeah that's on, on friday isn't it it is um okay so again, I'll I'll ask the floor if there's any questions for Mark before we look to conclude the session. Okay, it doesn't seem as though there are Mark. So um, can I thank thank you for the time you've given us today? Obviously, it's a busy period for us all, and we appreciate the fact you've taken time after the school to share your learning and how best to apply edgy school. Um, as I've said in the chat, you can download resources for free to use in the school. Um, the platform's growing all of the time. So do follow us on social media uh, to stay in touch. We're on most of the main platforms, as you'd probably expect. Uh, and we'll continue to send emails just um, for sort of updating on progress. Um, OK, there's a question. Thank you. Have any teachers in the group tried any of the resources yet? Doesn't seem as though anybody has, Kate. Andrew's saying yes. Okay, fab. So, I'd imagine. Can you, can you hear me okay? Yes, thank you, Andrew. Yeah, so I've used them um, with uh, Key Stage 2, Key Stage 2 pupils, the Amazing Islands, and um, it worked quite effectively through Teams I used it with. And we just downloaded the resources, um, used the lesson plans that were already in place and sent them resources and children can access it at home. And it was great. It was really effective. Good to hear. Yeah, yeah I found them great. Okay, I thought they were fantastic. Really good. I know some schools have used the resources to set homework projects because there is quite a lot of self-directed activity. So without having to place too much burden on the teachers, it is a, a, a well, I guess it's low hanging fruit in terms of giving the children something to be doing from home. I think if you just, if you just everybody, if you just go back to what Kate asked and, and sort of Andrew just said, I, think, I do think one of the things about this um, is uh, that perhaps differentiates it from some other resources is that um, what we've ended up doing, what schools have ended up doing, is is going and finding stuff. But this isn't just separate pieces of activity. This is actually a scheme that is, um, and Kate asked me, completely sequenced in terms of national curriculum, um, completely sequenced in terms of skill development. Um, would, whatever Ofsted compliant means, um, would be well seen by Ofsted. Um, I suppose I know that to a degree because prior to, um, prior to the first lockdown, um, in the autumn term we hosted the chief inspector of schools who came and spent the day in our school to look at both our primary and our secondary curriculum as they were evolving into edge of school and we got a huge amount of praise because this has been a labor of love over lots of years so this hasn't been created as a knee-jerk reaction to a pandemic this is something that's been in our primary and secondary schools for a significant amount of time 
and has been tried and tested and has, has then been revised and we've added to and it's it's far better than it was previously by virtue of the inputs of our different partners um, but this is not a separate a set of separate activities that youngsters do and we hope it might join together um, it's not where we you know someone has commissioned someone to do some content and we're all going to scramble around and try and use it because actually we haven't got anything else this is a well thought through sequence set of activities that will make a difference in terms of learning outcomes no it doesn't feel no i think um it looks as though we're we're done i think mark so can i thank everybody for for attending and um as i say the resources are available for free through the website so do do go and have a look and see how you can take them into school um the pd and the um sort of training programs will be available through that those links as well so um do stay in touch and thank you all for the time you've given us today yeah thanks everybody have a great have a great day great week please look after yourselves